Welcome to Here and There. I'm your host, Whitney Long. On this month's episode, we'll be speaking with a host of guests. We'll be speaking with Teresa Little about a unique fundraising event at Toad Suck Days. And Mike Kemp will be bringing us information on spring drives you can take around the state. Plus, we'll be bringing you information on upcoming events in Conway and Faulkner County. Stay tuned. Here and There starts now. You've arrived at your destination. Welcome back. Today we are with Mike Kemp and Mike is going to give us some excellent tips on how to explore Arkansas. Thank you so much for being with us today. Glad to be here. I'm excited to hear about all the fun ways that we can explore the state of Arkansas. We have some beautiful culture and terrain yep, and you have do. some excellent tips to share with us. Well, I, I don't know if they'll be <laughs> excellent, but I'll do my best. Um, I like to ride motorcycles. Um, I've been doing it for a about 20 years now um, and I think that's probably the best way to get out and explore um, the state because it is beautiful there is a, a quite a varied terrain and lots of places to go see and enjoy yes and lots of fun places to stop and eat yes yes oh. we've been um, my wife and I also like to get out for drives and lately we've stopped um, in Hollis at the Hollis Country Store um, and that's been kind of fun. Um, they, their claim to fame is having the best bologna sandwich in Arkansas. So we'll also stop and get an RC Cola and a Moon Pie because they have those. Um, lots of neat places like that. Um, we also like to go to Petty Jean quite a bit and have, maybe have dinner there. Um, it's also one of my favorite motorcycle rides because it is close, it is a fun road, and it's very pretty up there. Okay, so what's your favorite place to drive to if you're gonna go out for a ride? Okay. Driving probably would be going to Petty Jean with Crystal. Um, as far as riding goes, there's lots of local roads that I enjoy. Petty Jean is also a nice ride because um, several roads, not only the main road taking you up to the state park, several roads off of that road that lead you into, you know, fun little backcountry roads. Um, if you go completely over the mountain, you're on Scenic Highway 7, which runs from basically the northern to southern border of the state, which also takes you back into Hollis um, and into Hot Springs. So probably Petty Jean would be the go-to destination, but not the only one, obviously. Yeah, and we're lucky because it's just so close. It I is, mean, it's a... it is, and the view is beautiful yeah. up there. Um, we've even done, I've done some motorcycle rides with a cousin where we will go from Petty Jean to Mount Nebo, and we haven't quite had time to loop Mount Magazine into that, but um, that would be another neat little ride and probably some of the most beautiful scenery in the state. Yeah. What's some of the neatest things that you've seen while you've been out exploring? Um, gosh, random wildlife, um, <laughs> which is neat to see as long as they're not crossing the road in front of you. Um, I, did, I have done rides within the state where, well, let me back up. This weekend, I was with my cousin um, riding north to, to Jasper. Um, we took Highway 16 to Highway 123, and they're just small roads, state roads, but being able to see just the scenery, and particularly at this time of year when the leaves are gone, you can see the topography for miles, and, and I think that's kind of neat. It's, it's pretty when the leaves are in, and it's pretty when it's fall, but in the winter, just to be able to see all the mountain ranges and just you know marvel at how beautiful this state is. Yeah, yeah. Is there a specific time of day that you like to ride? No, I mean. <laughs> Those sunrises or any, sunsets? Well, the problem early and late, um, you do run into more possibility of wildlife. Um, Mornings, if you're not a morning person, you know, you're <laughs> kind of, I, I would prefer getting up in the morning. Um, sometimes it's a little cool, mm -hmm. but summertime, that's probably the best time to be up because it's before the heat of the day and you can get a few miles in while it's still relatively comfortable. Mm -hmm. so. so on your trips, what's been your favorite place to stop and eat? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, we've... I've been several times to the Ozark Cafe in Jasper, um, 
and it's just it's it's I know it's a little bit further out, but it's been around, gosh, since the '30s, I think. I mean, it's it's a long time staple. Uh, the burgers are good. I've had fun rides. Probably better memories of the company that I was keeping on the ride um, rather than the food itself. But the food is good too. Yeah. That's great. So do you stay overnight or you, do you drive and come back? Or no? Usually they're day trips. Yeah. Um, I've done one trip out of state into Tennessee where it was a multi-day, you know, stay in a place and, mm -hmm. and hang out around that area. Um, but usually within the state, because it's a small state, a lot of times you can just do a fantastic day trip, be gone for five hours or longer and see everything you'd want to see and be able to sleep in your bed at night. So that's been kind of the majority of the trips that I've made. Yeah, that's always a plus. Yeah, yeah. So how do you plan your trips? <laughs> I'm a map nerd. Um, <laughs> I, I try to stay up with Facebook groups that have similarly, well, have like-minded folks that will plan routes and give suggestions on highways. Um, the Arkansas Department of Tourism's website is a great resource for planning, um, particularly motorcycle trips. They have a section that's dedicated specifically to motorcycles. Mm -hmm. They'll have routes planned out that include um, suggestions for dining, uh, places mm -hmm. to stay, things to see while you're out. Um, so I've oftentimes gone to it and decided, you know, this looks like a fun road. Let's go try that and we can eat here or there, you know, and it's kind of a fun fun way to plan out and also I'm a map nerd so I'll take a state map and go I wonder where that road goes and what it looks like so then I'll try to file it away and do it later on yeah that's awesome well thank you so much for sharing with us it no. is a it's coming up on spring where all the flowers and everything is blooming and yes you get a all that pollen in your face if mm -hmm. you're if you're riding mm -hmm. <laughs> sneezing in your helmet is always fun getting the face shield open before the yes. sneeze occurs. So. Yes. Well, thank you for You're sharing welcome. your tips, and we, we're excited about exploring more. Great. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Jeff Brooks at Brooks Fine Jewelry. My wife, Kathy, and I would like to invite everybody down to meet the newest member of our team, Eddie Havens. Eddie is a member of the National Association of Jewelry Appraisers and another gemologist from GIA. I'm excited to be here in Conway, and I want to thank you for voting Brooks Fine Jewelry the best jewelry store in Faulkner County. We have also moved starting our Brooks inside Brooks Fine Jewelry under one newly remodeled roof. Brooks Fine Jewelry, your jewelry makers in downtown Conway. Welcome back. Today we're here with Le Dr. Leslie Graviel and Teresa Little with the events Omelette with the Toadmaster that is coming up in May and you don't want to miss it. So listen closely. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes, we're I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Um, yes, May 2nd from 8 in the morning until 11. So you can come before church or maybe after church and join us for a delicious omelet. Uh, it will be at the uh, Brick Room at 1020 Front Street. And that is a beautiful room um, to have an event in. So we're, we're very excited this year to, to be able to do it in person. That's great. So tell us a little bit, y'all have been doing this for a long time. Yes. Tell us some history yes. about the event. Yes, well, I'll also uh, say that um, Milestones, which was formerly Faulkner County Day School, so I want to make sure I say that because lots of people know us as Faulkner County Day School. We changed our name in 2017 to more reflect what who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. um, but it, we have been in business for 60 years this year. Wow. Uh, so we started in 1961 with the help of the ladies of the Junior Auxiliary here in town. And uh, the community has been very good to us. So for 30 years, we did an omelet breakfast. Um, we, it kind of got, it grew big, uh, it was hard for the staff uh, to do it, and it became um, a little burdensome the way we were doing it. So it, we did races for a while, 5Ks for a while. That got a, got a little bit difficult as well. It was hard to get someone to, to be a director of it. So 
we decided three years ago to bring back the omelets. Um, and with the omelets came our board member, Brian Ratliff, who had the idea uh, that kind of based it off of breakfast with princesses at you know Disney World. Well, this is Conway's breakfast with our famous Toadmaster. And so he is there greeting people. It'll, be, it'll look different this year. <laughs> and everybody will expect that. Um, three years ago, we did it in person, and of course it was wonderful, and everybody came to eat. The venue was, was great. The sponsors are what really make a difference in the amount of money that we raise. So uh, we have lots of the community who support us. Um, last year, it had to be virtual, and we had our, our virtual <laughs> t-shirts. Um, Leslie uh, Graybill, who was also a board member, she ran that last year, and it was also awesome. We just couldn't eat an omelet, so <laughs> that was disappointing. But uh, this year, we're, we're going to um, go live again and be, uh, be at the brick room serving omelets under restrictions of the health department. Well, that's great. So if somebody's watching and they're not sure what Milestone Services is, tell us a little bit about who it serves. Uh, Milestone serves children age uh, six weeks to five years who have developmental delays. So if a child is born sometimes premature or with a, they're just not developing um, like the parent or the doctor thinks that they need to be. Um, we provide services for evaluations and therapy, occupational, physical, speech therapy, a nurse, uh, nutrition services uh, on site. And along with that, we have uh, children who are typically developing. And they come, their parents pay for daycare, they come, they fully interact with the children with delays, they become friends, they grow up. I've been doing this for, for almost 38 years and uh, I have kids who are in the community now um, and doing great things who are some of our daycare kids and they still have a heart uh, and understanding of the inclusion of people with developmental disabilities. That's wonderful. Oh so, yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Well thank you so much for sharing with us and yeah. now Dr. Leslie's going to come and give us some more of the, yeah. the details about the event and how we can be involved. Yeah. Dr. Gravel, thank you for being with us and sharing some more details about the Omelets with the Toadmaster event. So if people are excited about coming and want to get more involved, how can they do that? Yeah, thank you so much for having us on today. I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, I know I'm just really excited to get back out and be able to start doing things um, a little bit, even though they're still different. Um, and we're really excited to be able to have the Toadmaster um, and have you know kids and families be able to uh, get a chance to interact with him, eat an omelet from one of our celebrity chefs. Uh, you might even have an omelet cooked by Santa Claus um, at Omelets with the Toadmaster. So, um, one of the ways that folks can find out about the event is uh, we have an event on Facebook, so they can go on Facebook and look for Omelets with the Toadmaster and get all the ticketing information there. Um, it's also on the Milestones website, so that's milestonesconway.org, um, and there's a section there to give, um, and that will allow people to either uh, get tickets for the event or, you know, if they're not able to come to the event uh, this year but still want to support Milestones, there is other... There are other opportunities to donate on the website as well. That's great. And the money that you raise is going straight back into the center. So tell us about how that will touch the, the lives of these kids. Absolutely. So, I mean, Milestones does a lot of incredible work uh, with all of the kids and families that they serve. Um, but, you know, it's always helpful to have fundraisers and other, uh, you know, extra dollars that come in that can be spent on things like, you know, upgrades to the playground and replacing the fence and keeping everything safe um, and fun and supportive for the kids. That's great. So if they want to um, plan their trip to do the omelets with the Toadmaster, is there anything specific that they need to think of? Um, parking, it's downtown, so that's great. Or can they buy tickets when they get there? Do they need to buy them in advance? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, because of COVID and COVID precautions, we are still just in full, uh, you know, safety and precaution mode. And so we made, um, you know, some adjustments to the event and, you know, have the event plan and everything um, where we are asking people to get their tickets in advance um, so that we know who's coming at what hour. And there'll actually be a way that folks can reserve a specific time uh, to come. So we'll only have a limited number of tables at each hour. Um, and, uh, and only one family group uh, per table. So we'll keep everybody um, definitely far apart uh, for their own uh, comfort and safety. And then we also have uh, takeout to go omelets this year. So folks can, can get those as well if they wanna uh, get, a, get an omelet and maybe catch a glimpse of the Toadmaster, but not necessarily come in and, and do the whole thing, so. Okay, what kind of omelets are you gonna be serving? Whatever kind people want. We have a great, uh, a lot of great uh, ingredients and uh, things donated by the community, a lot of great community support there. Um, and of course, um, you know, we uh, have, have great sponsors for the event. We're gonna have Think Coffee um, specialty drinks there, uh, which we're really excited about their support. So um, yeah, you'll get a delicious omelet um, and uh, some patty cakes, I think, and some Think Coffee. And uh, we're just really grateful for all that community support. So if somebody is interested in coming, what is the deadline they need to make sure they bought their tickets before to uh, purchase and get there? Yeah, so tickets will just be, um, you know, reservations will be on a first come, first serve basis. So since we have those limited spots um, in the brick room, I just would encourage people to get their ticket as soon as possible. And, you know, all the way up until the event, if we have room, we'll definitely accommodate um, folks if we can. Um, but yeah, I would encourage folks to get their tickets fast. All right, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeff Brooks at Brooks Fine Jewelry. My wife, Kathy, and I would like to invite everybody down to meet the newest member of our team, Eddie Havens. Eddie is a member of the National Association of Jewelry Appraisers and another gemologist from GIA. I'm excited to be here in Conway, and I want to thank you for voting Brooks Fine Jewelry the best jewelry store in Faulkner County. We have also moved Sterling Bar Brooks inside Brooks Fine Jewelry under one newly remodeled roof. Brooks Fine Jewelry, your jewelry makers in downtown Conway. UCA's Outreach and Community Engagement Division has a number of events coming up. Here's Penny Hatfield to tell us more. Happy April. I'm Penny Hatfield with UCA's Outreach and Community Engagement, connecting the campus to the community. Even though the, sem even though the semester is winding down, we still have a lot going on at UCA. The Arkansas Coding Academy is offering two classes. A sequel course is a short course that is from April the 6th to the 29th, and then we're offering a Node.js MongoDB development course that starts April 13th and ends December 9th. These courses will provide a great opportunity for you if you would like to upgrade your skills. Angela Grayson will present Solopreneurship as part of the Minority Business Workshop Series on noon, April the 7th. Angela is a trailblazer, and she can guide you through the rough terrain of the solo business owner. This event is free and virtual. The Community Development Institute produces a podcast every Wednesday. You need to check it out wherever you get your podcasts. If you are in the market to purchase a new home and take advantage of those great interest rates, Outreach has a class for you. We're offering financing a home loan at six o'clock on April the 8th. It's free and it's virtual. Canva is a web-based graphic design program and it lets you create all sorts of designs on your own like um, social media posts, posters, flyers, even more. The Center for Community and Economic Development in partnership with Silver Lake Desi Design Studio is hosting a free Canva training from 9.30 to 11 a.m. on April the 8th, and this will be via Zoom. It's a great opportunity if you wanna, you know, sort of upgrade your skills making those birthday party announcements, or if you are working from home and you don't have a graphic designer, this is a great opportunity to learn how to make some of the things that a graphic designer would make for you. Save a little money. Dr. Allison Vetter will present Uninvited Attention, the Culture of Sexual Harassment at 6 p.m. on April 20th via Facebook. This is part of the Women's Leadership Network program series and it is free. 
Friday, April the 23rd at 6 p.m. via Zoom, Dr. Zach Smith will moderate a panel discussion with leading activists in the Uyghur community. Over 1 million Uyghur Muslims have been imprisoned by the Chinese government in the name of combating religious extremism. This is going to be a fascinating and enlightening discussion. The event is sponsored by the National Consortium for Teaching About Asia. And finally, the Center for Community and Economic Development is offering marketing for a small business at 9 a.m. April the 27th via Zoom as part of their Community Conversation Series. This event is free. As always, we hope to see you either virtually or in person. Please join us in April for all of our classes. Thanks so much, back to you. If you have any events that you would like to share with us, or if you would like to learn more about anything we discussed on today's program, visit the website on your screen. I'm Whitney Long and I'll be seeing you here and there.